I would like to call to order the regular monthly meeting of Joliet Junior College Board of Trustees. Joan, would you call the roll, please? Roderick? Present. Garcia Guillen? Present. Mahalik? Present. Morales? Here. Dan O'Connell? Here. Washington? Here. Wilkinson? Present. And Wonderland? Here. I'd like to welcome everybody who came out tonight, either in person or virtually. And at this time, pledge, pledge of allegiance. And seeing how this guy just walked in, how about the mayor of Morris leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Indivisible. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, item 1.0.5, public comments. Joan, do we have any public comments tonight? No requests received, Mr. Chairman. All righty. Moving on to 1.1.1, business reports, bond refunding, refunding discussion. Um, I would like to call Jeff Heap to the podium. If you recall, this is a revisit um, from the discussions at the last meeting in February. Um, trustees had asked for a little bit more time to review the PowerPoint, and Jeff is here to answer any questions and seek your approval and the direction of, to move forward. So, Jeff, thank you. You covered it all. So, I guess it's I'm here to answer if there's any concerns or questions or if there's any additional information that You're is good. requested or needed. You're good. Go home. Okay. <laughs> if you could review it once again briefly or summarize it. <laughs> Questions, questions, questions for from anybody for Jeff. Or do you want to just is, okay. is this working? Is it pointing in the right direction? Oh, here you go. Okay, we can fly through the next one. This is just kind of the agenda. So basically with our bonds, the 2013 or 2012 A and the 2013 B is the ones that we have some option to call them in early for interest savings. Mm -hmm. So currently right now, based on all our tuition back bonds and what the capital assessment fee based on tuition hours generated and with tuition hours being down and you could trend that forward, even assuming we have a bump back up in hours as we hopefully get back a little bit more in person we still have a rather large annual deficit going forward. Okay. With the potential to call these bonds in and then use $24 million of kind of surplus college funds, primarily from being reimbursed for city center by the state, that coupled with issuing new debt for a much lower interest rate we'd have significant savings, especially after the first couple of years that, you know, in the million dollar range in 23 and 24, and that's just the way the bonds are structured right now. There's not a whole lot of bond that we can call in those first couple of years, but then afterwards from 25 through 38, we'd be looking at approximately a million seven. And by that, it's basically surplus if we left the capital assessment fee as is versus what it was. Uh, so it would give the college options of there'd be quite a bit of reduced cost, you know, present value expected, and that'll show in the later slide of around $8 million, then to give the college the option of adjusting the capital assessment fee in the future to lower that. Oh, Dan went over this one. Uh, so this would be basically a proposed refunding. And it would be because the way the current IRS laws are in the call dates, not till in the future, we'd have to issue it as tax, taxable refund. Uh, overall, 
the interest rates are very favorable right now that the overall rate is about 2.4%. When Dan did this, he had a little bit of cushion in there. Rates have risen a little bit over the last month. Uh, it's probably right at where it would be. So there's basically no cushion left in this. But if you switch the side, next slide, Jim. This is where based on doing that issue, the old debt service versus the new debt service, you know, there's basically $32 million of savings 24 million would be college funds that we put in that basically present value savings is a little over $8 million projected. So it's significant savings and it's primarily the interest rate on those 2013 B bonds is five to five and a half percent. So they're, they're, the rate is high on those compared to what the market is today. Right. And then, and then we would be locked in at that rate for the, for the term of the bonds, right? Yes, whatever the bonds were issued at, yes. Okay. There's no fluctuating bonds when I'm trying to say the rate, so. We would not be looking to do variable rate. Okay, perfect. These would be a fixed rate, yes. Yeah. Am I answering your question, Jake? You are. I mean, yeah. it's at all-time lows, so we might as well lock in now is what I'm trying, is what I'm trying to suggest. I agree. <laughs> I agree. And we're not extending them out anymore? No. We're keeping them where they were at? Mm-hmm. And we're just looking for a lower interest rate? Lower interest rate. And then by using the 24 million, we reduce the amount of principal outstanding. Mm -hmm. And we have, and then we level is, that is savings there any, out. Is there any additional cost to, to refinance the bonds? Go ahead. I got two people talking here. I'm, I'm sorry. Is there any additional cost to refinance these, Jeff? There would be some issuance costs, yes. How much? I don't think Dan had that in here. Uh, we need a ballpark, at least an idea, because when we're looking at doing this, there's always got to be a cost involved, unless they're doing yes. premium bonds and it's absorbed at the end through the premium. And I believe the way he's got this factored into, I don't think I got a, I don't know if I got a proposed sources and uses or not with me. This is trusty. Would have been factored in Garcia. The yes. Sorry, I have a question. Uh, this is Shasti Garcia. I just want to make sure um, that I understand this correctly. Um, the bonds that we're looking at, will they impact this, the cost of tuition for our students in any way? She said I couldn't. It, it, not increasing. It would be reducing costs that we'd have the ability to reduce the capital assessment fee in a, this would in not, a future year. This was not have anything to do with tuition. Got it. Most They're related to tuition though, just because it's the capital assessment fee paying for this debt service. But right. we're going down. Yeah. yeah it, it this was, is basically $8 million of present right. value savings over the next 15 mm -hmm. years. So this is just the capital fee. This has nothing to do with the tuition, yeah. tuition rates. So eventually could we eliminate that capital fee? Capital fee is comprised of multiple. Look, well, I, based on this, it'd be 2038. Jeff, can you repeat the question? I can't hear. I'm, I'm having a hard time hearing when it's there and there. Can you repeat the question so we can hear what your answer is unto it? Uh, the last question was basically eliminating the capital assessment fee, correct? The question was, the first question was, um, is it going to impact student tuition? That's what Trustee Garcia asked. Okay. And this would be... The only impact would be to potentially reduce the capital assessment fee in the future. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, I don't have any questions. I don't see any real downside to this. I think I would go ahead and move forward. I don't have a copy of a proposed source and use for what the overall fees would be. Is that something you could provide to me and I'll share? I can yeah. Send it to the board. Yeah. yeah. I can add besides Dan that, that together. Besides that, besides that little hiccup, Jeff, I think that if you provide that and it doesn't look outrageous, then I, like I said, I have no problems with moving forward. So Understood. if you send those to me, I can forward that on. And then when we put it on the agenda for approval, they would have that in advance. If there are any questions, mm -hmm. we could ask. Okay. Because the concept would be a parameters uh -huh. resolution. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So when you're looking at this, it's 52 right now, 53 total with the two bonds, correct? That's at, at current status. You got 8.64 and you got 44.365. About 53. Yeah. And we're going to go down totally to, if I subtract out the 24, that's what we'll be going down to then? Basically, yeah. Okay. There'd be probably a little bit in there because we have to do an advance escrow mm -hmm. because it's two and a half years for the call date. So we'd lose a little bit there just because you're not going to earn much on investing funds right now. Right. How much is of a rate differential is there right now? On investing versus... Probably lucky to get 20 basis points right now in investing funds, even going out two years, mm -hmm. 25 basis points okay, and versus the average interest rate uh, was two and a half on 2.4 percent estimate on the bonds. Mm -hmm. And as far as the 20, the 24 million that we had in funds, what uh, instrument do we have that in that it was yielding? How much do we get anything on that for yield of spread? Basically, when we got that cash, interest rates were diving. So, I mean, it is primarily in money markets right now. So it's just in the money market, so it's points. under the 1% then, right? Oh, yes. Okay, so we're not gaining anything, even though now rates are starting to go this away. We're not seeing anything that's changing. And other, any other tools that we can put it in? Nothing big yet. Okay. I mean, rates have drummed up a little bit, but to even get much over 1%, you're locking funds up for multi-year. Yeah, right. um, I think the, there's more downside for locking in at that rate at this point, in my personal opinion. What's the current rate that's on the bonds right now? What are we at if we're looking at the rates? The, the 2013B was between 5 and 5.5%. Five and so 5 mm -hmm. and 5.5? Five and yeah. Okay. I think 5.2, 5.3 the average overall. So it... When that one was issued, the rates were high, definitely higher. Okay. Thank you. Anything else for Jeff? Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. So we're good. Thanks, good. Jeff. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Jeff. You might want to stay up here again, but. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not oh, no, him. No, no, no. Nope. This, okay. is, this is our mayor. <laughs> All right. 1.1.2. Oh. Morris TIF extension. Right. I'd like to invite Mayor Kupchik from Morris to the podium to uh, share with the board his request for the president to sign a letter of support. May I? Yes. Thank Here you. At the podium. <laughs> so they are. I feel a little better speaking without <laughs> it. Um, thank you uh, for allowing me the, the time here. I will be cognizant of that and uh, good evening. We do have a few things that I just want you to understand. This was put together for the schools in Morris uh, that are impacted, but the benefit goes beyond those to uh, all taxing bodies. We, uh, the, the city of Morris did not bring this up. This was actually proposed by one of the school superintendents requested us to look to go for another extension. Mm -hmm. uh, with that being said, we need to have a letter of support from all taxing bodies impacted or at the minimum, a letter of no opposition to those. Um, and I want to have to get my driving out license because I can't see. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> I'm good on long distance. It's a short game that shot. Hmm. Uh, in the packet that I handed out, if you will look at on this slide here, uh, the second, third, fifth, seventh, and eighth bullet points, the second one, review uh, sharing agreements provided more uh, revenue sharing agreements provides more revenue to the schools than if the TIF expires. The third uh, bullet point, the TIF surplus allows schools more flexibility than a levy with restricted tax rates. Five is TIF revenue allows the city to continue to improve infrastructure and indirect benefit to schools. That being said, we have just got, now granted nothing like Will County, but we're quite happy in Grundy that we just landed a Procter & Gamble, 1.3 million square foot uh, distribution facility that is under construction currently up just north on 47. It is in the corporate limits. And they have the opportunity to construct another 1.3 million square foot footprint next to it in the future if they need or choose. That is not in a TIF. So Prologis, south of that, has 
807,000 square foot today as it is, has the ability to expand, I believe, about another 700,000 to that building. The, the pad is ready, it just would have to be constructed, as well as about 800,000 to the south of that. We also have the Casco and the new Casco meat plant. That meat plant we're a little proud of. Everything even west of the Mississippi, a lot of it west of the Mississippi and everything east to the Atlantic. Every hot dog, hamburger patty, meatball packet that you were to buy <laughs> comes out of that Morris plant. Uh, just to put into perspective, none of those are in a TIF. None of those, other than the original Casco Depot, none of the rest of that development would have occurred without the TIF because we have taken our TIF and put it into infrastructure. You don't see it, it's all underground, but it knew we did build a brand new sewage treatment facility, uh, our wells, our potable water plant, all of those things to service those and to be able to, to continue to attract are because of the TIF that we have been able to use. Um, new property developments, not possible without that infrastructure. The overall big picture is long-term, more revenues will be generated that would benefit the schools and all taxing bodies, as well as the city. Um, right now, currently, we have an agreement that we do the city, it's a 50-50, we retain 50% in the TIF. 50% is then given back, 40% goes to the three schools that they divide that out, 10% is declared surplus, which you receive a portion of. We're looking at the extension of a 60-40 split. The city will take and retain 40%. We still have improvements to do at sewage treatment facility, two of them actually. Um, and we will have a 35% donation that will go to the three schools to split, and then it goes to a 25% surplus declared annually. And this will be in an IGA with the three schools, mandates that we have to do it for all taxing bodies on that surplus. So everyone would be in on it. Moving down to, if we could go. Jim, we're under financial information. Yeah, we're moving down. I'm gonna move a little more. Cause again, some of this is put together for the school districts. Um, I guess if we go to page eight, you're at five there. Your eight and my eight are different. Can we back up to seven? I'm sorry. There we go. Uh, right now, the city revenues current in the blue and the green shows if there's a TIF extension, how much we would be able to receive. Uh, the school revenues currently in the blue, the green shows uh, what it will be. And if the TIF expires, it shows what it drops down to. All other taxing bodies currently you're getting with the surplus that, that blue, it will go to the green. Gray is what it would be without the TIF if it is left to expire. The next page, which is my nine, but it's this one that's showing on the screen, tax year 2020 surplus comparisons. These are all of the impacted taxing bodies within Grundy County around Morris that are in the TIF. Juliet Jr. towards the bottom there. Today, what you received from the 2019 mm -hmm. tax base that were tax, property tax paid in mm -hmm. that we received in 2020, whenever the dust settled just recently, you, you may have already received your check. We have declared that surplus that has been sent to the treasurer. Those checks are pro rata put out. You would have received a check for $19,715.80 keeping everything status quo equal if it were to be, which we know they go, taxes go up. Uh, but the Joliet Junior College, 25% uh, of that TIF would jump it from that 19,000 to 49,289. Um, if you look at the next page over to your right third from the Third from the right, Juliet Junior College currently is where you're at with the uh, TIF revenues. 25% would be the green on the extension. I want to thank you for your time. Again, I, if there are any questions, I did try to respect that and move it as quickly as possible. Just a quick update. Uh, Grundy County Board last night approved um, signature of that letter uh, unanimously. Saratoga School and Morris 54 grade are both up on next Monday night there, but I, uh, well, uh, Saratoga School is 100% behind it. It was their super that requested us to, to go forward with this. Uh, 54 is also behind it. Uh, Morris Library is approved, letter is coming. Morris Fire District meeting is on the 17th. 
uh, talking with the fire chief, he said that the board, he believes the board will be totally favorable. Saratoga Township, I spoke with the supervisor today, again, is favorable. He hopes to have that by uh, Friday, Monday at the latest. Ariana Township has approved the, uh, the letter as well as Morris Township. And that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. If there are Thank any questions. Thank you very much. Jim, just one quick question. Um, how many jobs are we talking about at, at this facility? For you? The, all of those today or the one that's currently with Procter & Gamble? The, the one, all of them today and all of them, the projected future jobs with this. With this uh, well, Procter & Gamble right now is just, they're projecting 290 starting mm -hmm. pay of over 1775 with profit share as well as uh, full benefits. Procter & Gamble, is a, this is a great corporate that you would love to have for the fact that this is not a lease. This is not a 5, 10, or a 15-year lease. They bought the property. They will own the building. They will be Procter & Gamble employees. Same with Costco on how they do their things. They are their employees. They're not a temp help service. They're not a, they're a permanent employee. Perfect. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Jim. Just I'd appreciate it. I have a question. Just sure. out of curiosity, how did the fire department get so much? I'm just trying to figure that out. Tax one. rate. Pardon me? It's tax their, rate? Their the tax, tax rate. rate? The tax rate did it? Oh, that's what I... They had uh, two, or, two or three years ago, they, they increased, increased it. it? Yes, they did. Okay. That makes it understandable then. Thank yes. you. Yes. I'd appreciate it if uh, you would consider what we are under is a tight time frame due to legislation. Uh, we're looking to hopefully get everything at, on the 19th. I apologize again for the basically just dumping this on you at last minute, but it was something that was just put forth to us and we've been working nonstop. You're fine, to to you're fine. Thank you. Any <laughs> any questions? Thank you very much for driving Thank all you. the way up, up north. Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. So Thank I, you. do I have the board's approval to sign the letter? Yeah. Consensus from everybody? Consensus of the board? Yes. I yes. Say. Okay. Any I'll nays? Oh, go I'll, ahead, Judy. Okay, I'll sign it and get it over to Jeff, and we'll take care of it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you all Thank so you. very, very much. Uh, looking forward to, uh, we've got about another, just up 47 between Fractor and Gamble and Pro Lodges. We've got another 450, 500 acres, so hoping that we'll bring something else in that you'll have 100% of everything on, so it'll just continue to to build for that. So, again, thank you for your time. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, we've got that done. 1.1.3, uh, summer and fall 2021 online feed. I would like to invite Cecil Lucy up to the podium. Good evening. Currently, the college charges an online course fee equal to $35 per course for any online course. The college is requesting support to waive the student's online fee and to make no changes to the course fee for the summer and fall 2021 terms. Due to the ongoing pandemic, many courses will be delivered in a hybrid format requiring students to choose this option. Course fees are charged to help compensate the college for costs unique to a particular course, most significantly the lab component of a course. We are confident we can deliver the courses without raising the course fees. We anticipate that students will have more choices beginning during the spring 2022 term and online fees will be reinstated. The estimated revenue loss is approximately 175,000 for the summer and 250,000 for the fall. We will utilize the federal funding made available from the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security, or CARES Act, to fund this revenue shortfall. So we're therefore recommending that the Board of Trustees approve a waiver of the online fees for all summer and fall 21, I'm sorry, 2021 classes. The normal structure will resume for the spring 2022 term. Any questions? How much does anybody do, have a problem with this? I want to ask a question though first. Sure. How much do we have in that fund that we're using for from the from the in terms COVID? of cares? Yeah, from we, care. 
it's uh, 2.7 institutional funds in terms of that was allotted and another 9 million for the CARISA or the supplemental funding. So we still have quite a bit left to utilize, correct? Well, we're going through the process now Oops. of looking at our lost revenues okay. for tuition and fees and auxiliary services. We've also earmarked some other areas that we've already charged against it. So the anticipation is that we will definitely utilize the funds. Okay. So this is definitely worked into it that you've already foreseen to work into it, because I think we need to do that. Yes. That's my opinion on it for my position, but um, I think that's good because the other community colleges I know are doing that too. So I think it's great that we're taking those strides. Well, it's reasonable for the mm -hmm. students. All right. Thank you. Right. I would like to see that we rec that we um, extend it for school year 2021-2022. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping that we're we have students back in the classroom that year, Alicia. So, right, we can we can um, that could be used as bait to bring students in. I mean, yeah, we need to definitely work on enrollment. So by waiving some of these fees, it definitely is a bonus for students to sign up for classes. It's something but, that we'll take into consideration as always when we look at the fees for yeah, our students. And if good. you recall, we started this waiving these fees in spring of mm -hmm. 2020. Right. Yeah, I, I see no problem with it. Thanks, Cecil, for the presentation. Welcome. Thank you, Trustee Jay. Yeah. But are we working on this fiscal year then? That would end June thirtieth, and then we'd look at the way the way it would go for then 2021, 2022? Absolutely. And then of course yeah. with the uh, house just passing the additional uh, funding, correct. Of course, the expectation is that we'll have additional allocations as well. Yeah. Right, because I think we have to appro uh, approve it according to the calendar years of fiscal years that we're in. Right. That's yes. Correct. Right, well, this it. would be for fiscal t t summer and fall is for fiscal year 2020. No, I know, and I, and I understand. I understand that. I'm just making sure because that's what we were reminded of when we got our meetings with ICCTA that they talk about that. Well, let's do that, and then we'll take a look at it right. in the future. Mm -hmm. All right. Everybody okay with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. We both got it tonight. All righty. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now. Um, Here. Next item on the agenda is moment of silence for the following individuals. Rogelio, Rogelio Perez, father of Mario Perez, IT, Lynn Lichtenauer, friend of Joliet Junior College, John Jack Craigstraw, father of Lori Isaac, English, Philosophy, and World Languages, and Jean Coziol, father of Carol Foote, Fine Arts Department. Did we forget Lynn Lichtenauer? Oh, she's on there. She's on there? Okay, yep. thank you. Thank you very much. Next item 1.3, recognition of special guests other than the people that are here in person or virtually. Do we have anybody else here? Joan? No, Mr. Cannon. Chairman Wonderlook, I'd like to recognize and welcome David, who's here this evening joining us, and he's our sign language interpreter oh, for mm -hmm. the meeting. So welcome, David. Welcome. welcome. Hi, David. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Moving on, selected reports. Pro proclamation designating April as Earth Month. I would like to call upon Dr. Gray to read tonight's proclamation. Actually, Dr. Mitchell, uh, Dean Zuccarello has the proclamation. Okay, thank you, Dean Zuccarello. Good evening, everyone. I'm glad to be back for our annual proclamation for Earth Month. Whereas Earth Month is celebrated at Joliet Junior College through the entire month of April, with a focus on Earth Day, April 22nd, and Arbor Day, April 23rd, 
Whereas Earth Month provides individuals numerous opportunities to learn and engage, including but not limited to a tour of our Arboretum and Natural Areas, Spec Student Summit, Road Vision 6K Fundraiser, Environmental Speakers, Cobalt Road Cleanup, Tours of our LED Buildings, Tour of our Fruit Tree Guild and Earth Day Expo. Whereas April 22nd, 2021, marks the 50th anniversary of Earth Day celebrations in the United States, providing an avenue for growth of our global consciousness to work toward resolving issues in our environment, inspire new ideas, ignite passion, and motivate people into action. Whereas April 23rd, 2021 is National Arbor Day, which is an annual observance that celebrates the role of trees in our lives and promotes tree planting and care. Whereas Joliet Junior College recognizes the importance of sustainability through its board policy, 9.4.0, sustainability, adopted in 2012, which commits us to our core value of sustainability. Whereas Joliet Junior College sustainability initiatives help keep students, staff, faculty, and our community active and current in the ever-growing awareness of our society, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Joliet Junior College Board of Trustees proclaims the month of April 2021 as Earth Month in Illinois Community College District number 525, adopted this 10th day of March 2021. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion. I'll second it. John, call the roll, please. Mahalik? Yes. Morales? Yes. O'Connell? Yes. Washington? Yes. Wilkinson? Yes. Broderick? Aye. Garcia Guillen? Yes. And Wonderland? Yes. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Dean Cigarella. Uh, next, item 1.4.2 proclamation designating April as Community College Month. Hey, I have the pleasure of introducing Raul Hernandez. Raul was born in Berwyn, Illinois, but moved to Orland Park at a young age. To get to know Raul a little better, he enjoys being outdoors, um, art, riding dirt bikes, hiking, working out, traveling, and cooking. Not only that, but he is motivated to be an investment banker on Wall Street one day. He'd like to thank Joliet Junior College for preparing and shaping him into the person he is today. He is ready to take on any challenge and obstacle that comes his way. Raul? Good evening, Good evening, everyone. I want to thank Amy for selecting me to read the Community College Month Proclamation as it goes. Whereas more than 1,200 community, technical, and junior colleges, public and private, in the United States have contributed enormously to the richness and availability of American higher education. And whereas the public and private community, junior and technical colleges provide a broad array of educational services, which include transfer education, two-year associate degree programs, certificate programs for employment, basic skills education, continuing and community education. And whereas community colleges work in partnership with business, industry and government to provide job training assistance and economic development. And whereas community colleges provide necessary resources for community service, including career development, job search assistance, counseling, and developmental education. And whereas through these services, community colleges meet diverse and changing local needs and fulfill a vital function within the state's higher education system. And whereas community colleges provide an opportunity to obtain post-secondary education at a reasonable cost within commuting distance of their students' homes. And whereas Julia Junior College is one of the 39 community college districts in Illinois, providing occupational, pre-baccalaureate, and continuing education courses and services to more than 1 million Illinois citizens each year. Be it resolved that the Julia Junior College Board of Trustees hereby designates the month of April as a Community College Month in Illinois Community College District number 525 and encourages all citizens to recognize the value and opportunities available to them at Julia Junior College and at community, technical, and junior colleges throughout the United States. Signed to this 10th day of March, 2021. 
So moved. Second. Joan, call the roll, please. Broderick. Aye. Garcia Guillen. Yes. Pollock. Yes. Rallis. Yes. O'Connell. Yes. Washington. Yes. Wilkinson. Yes. And Wonderlock. Yes, but don't you think that uh, we should be getting proclamations from every other community college in the United States, <laughs> seeing as how we were the first one? <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that. Get on that. Mm. Thank you. Thanks for, all for reading that. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, next 1.4.3 faculty union report, Dr. Marsink. Thank you. I hope I'm here. Can you see me and hear me? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, my, com my, my remarks will be short this evening. Unfortunately, I, uh, well, not unfortunately for you, but, uh, but I have uh, actually have an, another meeting that I have to attend for the uh, the AFT local 604. And uh, but I, I do have a couple of things to say. First of all, I would like to thank the board. Uh, we uh, appreciate your patience over the last couple of uh, months and uh, listening to our concerns. I I I, um, uh, I know I spoke uh, at length, and I appreciate uh, I appreciate the patience you've shown. Uh, as far as uh, what Raul just said, we certainly support Community College Month. We think every month is Community College Month. And uh, I'm on board with, uh, with Chairman Wunderlich, too, as far as getting those proclamations in from the other colleges. Um, the un uh, a couple quick things. I do want to uh, say that we um, definitely support the removal of the, not that we have a say in it, but I just want you to know faculty supports uh, eliminating the online fees for, for the summer and fall. Uh, it is, uh, our students have, it's been a tough, tough year for them. Mm -hmm. And um, what we can do to help them and get, to through, get them through this, we, we definitely support. Uh, what you do beyond that, it will be up to the board, obviously. Um, uh, we, and then we do share uh, um, uh, Cecil Lucy's optimism that there's a spring will be different. We really do. Uh, and I know that faculty has worked hard along with Dr. Gray and, and Dean Zuccarella and, and others to, uh, to prepare a fall that will be much more uh, student friendly, hopefully. Than, than the last year has been, and uh, we've gotten very creative in how we're uh, presenting our courses, et cetera. And, um, we're, and I really think we're starting to see the, the light at the end of the tunnel, as they say, and um, I, I'm, I'm optimistic, and I think the rest of us are too. Uh, that said, uh, I will be returning. I, I am not completely leaving the meeting, but I will. Uh, I do have to go to the other meeting, and we'll we'll check back in later. But thank you for, again for the opportunity to address you. Thank, thank you. you, Dr. Thanks, Martin. Bob. Thank you, Bob. Okay, next item is one point four point four, adjunct faculty report. Uh, Laurel gave me a thing to read. Um, Chairman Wonderlich and members of the board, I had planned to attend this month's meeting in person, but that is, as it turns out, I am going to be unable to do so. But I want to take this opportunity to thank you, Chairman Wonderlich, for your many years of service to Joliet Junior College and this board. Your dedication and leadership is truly appreciated. As we continue through the rest of the semester and into the summer, we are all looking forward to a return to some semblance of normal. However, modified it may be at first. While everyone is hoping that our enrollment numbers improve, none are more, hope none are more hopeful than adjuncts who have been impacted disproportionately <laughs> as a number of students and therefore the number of sections has declined. We do appreciate the efforts that have been made to maintain sections wherever possible, but the real solution is a return to more normal enrollment levels. We are at the halfway point in this semester and spring break is next. I wish everyone a safe and enjoyable vacation week with time to recharge and enjoy the spring sunshine. Thank you for the opportunity to submit this report, Joel Disco adjunct faculty president. Thank you very much, Laurel. 
Yeah. Moving on, item 1.5.1, approval of minutes for the regular monthly meeting of February 17th. So moved. Second. There's no additions or corrections. Joan, would you call the roll, please? Frederick? Aye. Garcia Guillen? Yes. Mahalik? Yes. Morales? Yes. O'Connell? Yes. Washington? Yes. Wilkinson? Aye. And Wonderlich? Yes. And 1.5.2, approval of minutes for special meeting of February 9th. So moved. Second. Second. Motion and a second. If there's no additions or corrections, Joe and Chicago roll, please. Morales? Yes. O'Connell? Yes. Washington? Yes. Wilkinson? Aye. Roderick? Aye. Garcia Guillen? Yes. Mahalik? Yes. And Wonderlich? Yes. Item 1.6, communications. Any further communications, Ms. Turney? No further communications, Mr. Chairman. Item 1.7, approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Joan, call the roll, please. I'm sorry, I didn't get the first. Who moved? Dan. Dan. Or Dan and Jake. O'Connell? Yes. Washington? Yes. Wilkinson? Yes. Frederick? Aye. Garcia Guillen? Yes. Mahalik? Yes. Morales? Yes. And Wonderlich? Yes. Item 1.8, approval of the consent agenda. Chairman, I would like to pull one item this evening. Item number 4.2.2, .2, professional service, Baker Tilly, virtual Kraus. I'd like to pull that and bring that back in next month. Okay. Thank you. So moved. Oh, second. 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 Motion is second. Discussion? Matt, Joan, call the roll, please. Roderick? Aye. Garcia Guillen? Yes. Mahalik? Yes. Morales? Yes. O'Connell? Yes. Washington? Yes. Wilkinson? Yes. And Wonderlich? Yes. Uh, moving on, item number five, student development, no action required. Um, item number six, new business, old business, 6.1. I just want to bring something up. How are we doing with getting our faculty and staff vaccinated? Is there any way, because I, I know Juliet West is doing a big thing where they get every, everyone vaccinated in the community. Is there any way that we can offer the opportunity through JJC? So, um, trusting me, Holic, I can answer that. Um, that's, the, that's the million dollar question. We continue to encourage all of our employees and students to register through the county, but as we all know, they're they're struggling as far as the number of vaccinations that they have available. Mm -hmm. um, the President's Council has submitted a letter to the state, to the governor. We've reached out to um, health departments. We've reached out to our legislators, hoping, one, to expand and allow college-level employees and staff members to be included in Phase 1B. Um, okay. It continues to be denied. Um, going forward, we are working with the county to be, become a vaccination site. They just recently, I actually recently just talked with Jennifer Bertino Tarrant. We're going to change the location from main campus to Romeoville. But again, it's just a site for the county. And I want to say it's just a site, it's a site for the county to administer the vaccinations. However, there has been not, there, we have not received any notification that it will be expanded to include unless we get that directive from the state. So, we're doing the best we can. We keep our ears open. We have community members contact us at all times. But I believe until we receive more vaccinations in the county, it's going to continue to be a challenge. Well, I appreciate your efforts in this. And then I really do appreciate everyone that's on this call. You know, you guys are essential workers. You guys go on every single day. So I'd like to, if, if, we, if there's any way we can reach out and make any more contacts and do whatever you can, Judy, I really appreciate that. No, absolutely, and I'll let you know. I will tell, tell you that we're looking at the um, um, looking at testing, offering uh, COVID testing on site through the state, uh, through the University of Illinois in the state, um, and it will be optional for employees and students as we continue to open the doors and allow more, you know, um, more employees back on campus, our students back on campus. So that's one initiative. It's through Shield Illinois, uh, Cecil Lucy, Kara Anderson are working on that initiative, but. 
I, I can promise you that we are doing everything we can and trying to get the word out to get that support at the state level. Let us know if there's anything we can do, I know, besides reaching out to our, our congressmen, our representatives. I'd Absolutely. be willing to call me and make any phone call possible, so. Okay, thank you. Real quick, also, we have, um, you sent us flyers that we are going to be having our Board of Trustees Candidate Forum. Mm -hmm. It's coming up on March 23rd at 3 o'clock. Is that going to be in this building, in the U building? It's going to be, it will be virtual. The whole thing is virtual. Mm -hmm. So Ian probably could answer yeah, a few was, more questions. Yeah, I was going to talk about that during my report. But um, the student government is is going to be hosting the candidate forum. It's going to, everything's going to be virtual except for um, a couple of the student government members will be in person to kind of moderate the whole thing. Um, questions are being sent in by students. And then we're going to kind of um, filter through them, get the general idea of them all to make sure they're um, all um, non-biased and then it'll be all conducted by about two or three students i believe um is how we're gonna we're gonna have that set up okay thank you that was probably part of your report too right yeah <laughs> okay sorry i jumped the gun on that sorry okay ian will you also be televising it too or um, are you tubing it that i'm not sure about i i i mean i can i'll, I'll have to get back to you on that one i'm not too Could sure you in the pre in the previous years when they've done it, they've always because it's been actual, they've always taken it and put it on YouTube or put it on TV too. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, Amy Sims went out when I was talking to her about it. I I know she was talking about getting um, like marketing or getting just um, just media involved. Good, great, thank you. And hey, Ian, can you also send out a link to us before the actual virtual yeah, uh, yeah. meeting, just just so we can. Maybe with the calendar invite, so we can so we can just set it to our calendars. Yeah, sure thing. Thank you. Okay. Any other new business before the sport or old business? We have item six point one. Six point one. If not, going on item point seven. Oh, wait, we're no, we have 6.1. Yeah. Six Morales. Uh, six, yeah. Uh, so, Chairman, you're not going to. No, 6.1. I, sure. I asked for 6.1. Yes. Um, I'd like to request that uh, Attorney Carl Buck give us a breakdown on specifically what this is. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Could you give us a breakdown on what this means, the meaning of the motion to censure? Yeah, a motion for censure is the process by which a board uh, officially reprimands a fellow member of the board for conduct that pursuant to the movement uh, is deemed to be contrary to the duties and obligations of the board. It's a motion not like any other motion in the sense that there has to be a motion made. It requires a second. Once the motion is made and second, the chairman calls for discussion, which he can either do by roll call or open discussion. Once the chairman concludes the discussion, then there's a roll call vote taken. Uh, if the motion passes, uh, then that is that concludes the censure process. If the motion fails, that concludes the censure process. Uh, my point of saying that is, is that the motion for censure is in and of itself the process of discipline. So the motion passing or failing is the determination. And then the board, of course, goes on to the next agenda item on the agenda. Thank you. Then mm -hmm. I'd like to make the motion for censure of Trustee Maureen Broderick for the um, behavior and public comments displayed on social media outlets uh, regarding the January 6th insurrection of the Capitol. I need a second. Second. Joan Calderon. Our discussion. Oh, 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 the, the chairman, yeah. Trustee Morales, the chairman has to, he continues to run, even though you make the motion. Okay. The chairman continues to run, so then the chairman then can call for discussion. My apologies. Thank you. No, that's okay. Is there, is there any, any specific items that you're referring to? Other than just some. The items that were brought to our attention by um, Dr. Marsink over the last two months. Uh, the items that were brought to our attention from the students uh, last meeting, uh, the comments that were made on social media that, that I'm referring to. I think everybody knows what we're referring to. Maybe we should have a review. Um, 
Okay, I, I, I know where you're coming from. Uh, council, does there have to be anything more specific? No, the motion stands. So motion stands. If there's a second, then the board's uh, considering that motion as the motion's presented. Nothing, nothing more than just, uh, Trustee Morales, nothing more than just uh, items on social media. The items regarding the insurrection on okay. January 6th, yes. Uh, all of the comments that have been, I mean, I don't think I need to be specific. I mean, come on, I, I don't know if we're playing politics or what, but I think we all know that um, we have received, it's even in our minutes, we've received letters, comments, phone calls about um, expressions uh, from a board member that were um, out of line they were inappropriate, and as a board, I do not. As a board member of member of this board, I don't support those comments. Um, so, I, I don't know how much more specific you want me to be. It's fine. If there's a motion and a second. Um, discussion. Uh, I would like to add something. Uh, this is Shosti Garcia. I think that in the spirit of transparency, um, this is something that we have been, we have needed to do since the very beginning, but we haven't. So this is something that we need to hold everyone accountable, not only um, staff, faculty on different things that do not adhere to the mission of JJC, but also our fellow trustees. I agree. We're kind of late on this. I think it should have been done initially. She and had her yeah. Turn. Okay. Um, I have a question. Good night. Trustee Washington. Yes. I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, for censure, just what does that mean? Uh, I mean, what disciplinary ash actions can you possibly take? There, there's no another? disciplinary action by okay. way of removing them from a meeting or <clears throat> preventing them from talking or preventing the board member from voting. Literally the motion for censure is the discipline. So trustee Morales has made a motion and I'm just paraphrasing here to censure trustee Broderick based on social media comments made in uh, regards to the incident referenced at the Capitol. That motion has been seconded. The chairman has called for discussion. Trustee Garcia has commented. Trustee Morales has made the motion. So um, she's made her comments. And then the chairman has the ability to then ask other trustees if they want to comment. Once he determines that comment is concluded, there's a vote taken and that's the end of it. Um, student trustee Ian, any comments? Well, I, was just, I was trying to understand what um, like trustee Washington was saying. So there's really nothing so she's not like removed or anything. It's just a motion. If it passes, it passes. If it fails, it fails. Correct. The board under its policies adopts Robert's Rules of Order. And because the board is an elected body, uh, Robert's Rules of Order nor the Public Community College Act allow an elected, sitting elected official to be dismissed for any purposes within the Public Community College Act. So that is the sum and substance of the motion for censure. Okay. Yeah, what I've learned, because I've been asking questions about yeah, this too, is that uh, a public member, um, um, elected official cannot be removed um, unless but, they do a, commit a felony of yeah, some okay. sort. Discussion discussions is going to be, once you discuss, once you have your discussion, no more discussion. So, Ian, you are done? Yeah. Okay, uh, Betty? Uh, I would just like to say that it is unfortunate that the comments were made. They were not directly targeting JJC or any member of the staff or JJC students. Um, again, I'm of the persuasion people are entitled to their opinions, whether we agree or not. Um, that's all I have to say is that it's unfortunate, but it did not target JJC. JJC was not mentioned in any of the articles or any of the, the texts. It was on a personal page, um, a personal Facebook page. And yeah, that's all I had to say. Jake? 
I agree comment. with Buddy. I mean, it does. It did not show any personal things, but unfortunately, when you make a comment, and it goes out there. It, it's out there, and everyone's going to be able to interpret their own ways, and it's going to be. It's, it's it's when you post anything on in the internet, it's out there forever. So um, this is my, my so my dad always said, don't post anything stupid on the internet because you, you're gonna be out. You're gonna you're gonna be in trouble for it eventually. So uh, I don't think she meant to reflect it as anything in the JJC community. But like I said, it's one of those things. It's 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 hard to take back once 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 it's out there. So. Thanks, Jake. Dan? Yes, I, uh, um, I, I don't, uh, I don't like uh, uh, muzzling people for what they say, uh, even, uh, even if I, if, even if I don't agree with it, or even if we all don't agree with it. Um, um, you know, we can always disagree. Um, maybe it's a, uh, Maybe it turns on a light bulb. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, but the thing about this is, is that um, it should occur to us when we're on the board that somebody might be offended by uh, statements that are made on a public forum. And um, there could be a misunderstanding at that statement that had obviously has obviously aroused here um, in many of the campus community. And it, and to take issue with that statement, um, people should be able to take issue with the statement also. Um, so we can't take that away from them. So maybe the thing is, is that if there had been a, uh, if we had had a, some kind of exchange, like an apology, we wouldn't have to call it an apology, but maybe there was a misunderstanding. And uh, maybe what uh, was said was not intended to be hurtful to the college community, but nevertheless, it was said, and nevertheless, people were offended by it. And uh, and that uh, that apology has not come forward. Um, uh, I wish that it would. I wish that it would now or soon in the future. Um, I really don't know if uh, if you can withdraw a censure after it's been done. It doesn't sound like you can. Um, I uh, am not in favor of censure, but I will go along with this favor. If I will go along and be in favor of this censure, if in fact it would uh, it would help uh, the people in the college community to uh, heal over it. And, uh, and I hope that uh, we all can heal over it. That's my position. Thanks, Dan. Maureen? Thank you. You know, we all learn from our mistakes. And I, as a, I was a citizen at the time, a mother, a grandmother. Emotions were hard that day. Your son-in-law's in the trenches, your daughter's seven months pregnant, high risk, can't eat, your three-year-old granddaughter is crying on the phone that she'll never see her dad again. And it's a shame that you sit there with the emotions that get to you. And social media, I've learned the hard way, is the biggest and worst for us to be on. I apologize if people misunderstood me. My emotion was high. You sit there and you want to grab your son or your son-in-law and your daughter and your and your granddaughter to try and relieve some stress. Little did anybody know at the time that my son-in-law was taking everyone out of the Capitol to rescue them. So the emotion was high, knowing what he was going through. And yes, my emotion got to me. And I've talked to many in regards to this because I want them to understand, and that's why I talked to the paper, because I think they need to know that I was doing it as a mom, as a grandmother. I wasn't doing it as a JJC trustee. It was purely solely 
personal, and high-level concern, high emotion. I have reached out to Dr. Marsink and talked to Dr. Marsink. I've reached, I'm reaching out to the other groups in the organization here. And I want them to know that, yes, we learn from our mistakes. And yes, I, I regret that I made any comment on there. I wish that everybody had seen the whole entire thread that would have given you the understanding of what I, as a person, am proactive in my job situation, in my life with my kids, in everything I do, I'm proactive. More that I don't want to see us crisis handling anything. And I think that's what I do here as a board member. I try to make sure that we're proactive handling everything. And for my position, I don't want this as a reflection on JJC at all. I take great pride of entering the doors as a trustee in 2015 and doing my job as a trustee. And yes, I've learned that social media is not a good thing to be on. It can be taken the wrong way, just as, as well as when we talk to somebody when they're on the phone or texting or emailing, do we know what the real meaning is unless we see them face to face? I'm one that believes in face to face appointments so that I can see how you're receiving. And I look at all of you in this room and I am heartfelt with my meaning of I am sorry that it was taken the wrong way. And I have reached out to all that I need to, I think, to stimulate the fact that I want to be a board member here in good standing but please allow me to be a citizen at time. And at that point, I was a citizen, and I'm sorry for that. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I, I wish you didn't have to come to this motion. And um, I'll be the first one to say that I said things too that I regret, but I didn't say them on social media. Um, the words were said, if it was taken out of context, it was, um, but the fact that, that the verbiage is out there, um, It's, it's what it is and you can't take it back. Um, with that, Joe, would you call roll, please? Morales? Yes. O'Connell? No. Washington? No. Wilkinson? No. Roderick? Pass. Garcia again? Yes. Mahalik? Yes. Roderick? I'll abstain. And Wonderland. What was Jake's? Was that yes or no? Trustee Mahalik said yes. Um, yes. Maureen? I abstained. So the vote is? Four, three. Motion passes. Okay. All right, I appreciate everybody that's commented on this. Uh, thank you for allowing our board to work through this process and evaluate the situation. With this action, the board's consideration is concluded. We always strive to improve and greatly appreciate the input from all the JJC stakeholders. Thank you very much. Moving on to the next agenda item is new business. We got our first readings, old business point eight, our second readings, uh, third readings were approved in the consent agenda. Going on to the reports from JJC, JJC Foundation, uh, Ms. Garcia and or Ms. Mulvey. Yes, thank you. Uh, at this moment, I do not have our report, um, but I would like to thank our a, uh, ASL uh, interpreter, 
um, in making sure that we are providing uh, uh, accessibility for everyone in our community. Thank you. Okay. Next item, ICCTA, Ms. Broderick. Wait, uh, wait, sorry. Oh, Chrissy, I'm sorry. That's okay. I do have a report. Thank you. Um, the deadline for fall scholarships is approaching, which is May 1st, 2021. As of this morning, 829 students have started the application process and 386 have completed the application. Our office has been working with communications, uh, the communication center to send out reminder texts to all the students. April 1st is the deadline for the Foundation High School Merit Awards. The foundation awards $3,200 to at least one graduating senior at all 29 feeder high schools. The foundation's Vera Smith Sustaining Endowment Committee met last Friday and has approved several funding opp opportunities for our students. One of the uh, new initiatives the foundation will be supporting will be the annual membership fees for our PTK students. We will be awarding $18,000 to cover 225 membership fees to prospect prospective Phi Theta Kappa students. Two new scholarship enrollment initiatives were approved. The first one is Scrap the Gap campaign for $100,000, which will provide 200 students a $500 scholarship for fall 2021. This is, a simil this is similar to the Smart Start campaign that we had in the fall of 2020. The second enrollment initiative is for $150,000 and, and is the Foundation Completion Scholarship, which offers current students that are enrolled part-time to increase their credit, credit hours to a full-time status. The total amount for new scholarship initiatives for enrollment is $250,000 that the Foundation will be giving the college. Our 2021 sponsorship campaign is still open, and so far we have raised over $50,000 for our events. Plans are coming together for our virtual Night of Stars, which will be held on Thursday, April 15th at 6 p.m. We will be recognizing several important individuals that night. One is our Distinguished Alumni Achievement Award winner will be presented to William Conti, class of 1985. Bill is a senior portfolio manager and a wealth advisor at Morgan Stanley and a longtime foundation board member. The Susan H. Wood Hall of Fame Award will be going to Mr. Peter L. Neff, posthumous, a professor emeritus of English and World Languages Department at JJC. The Partner of Excellence Award will go to Lionel Bazell. And last but certainly not least, we'll be honoring Chairman Robert Wunderlich for 44 years of outstanding service to the Joliet Junior College Board of Trustees. And we will be recognizing our major gift donors for the past year. We recently sent out thank you cards to our consecutive donors that have given to the college for five years in a row and more. Special thanks to Dr. Mitchell for hand signing all of the thank you cards for our donors that were in the six to 10 year category. Our spring appeal has reached over 1,200 households this week. We featured one of our students, Nicholas Catello, who is an automo in our automotive program and whose family has been impacted by the pandemic. Nicholas received the Future JJC Alumni Scholarship. The Future JJC Alumni Scholarship is funded by our annual JJC Sock Campaign. This year, we sold a record number of socks totaling 240 pairs of socks for our February 19th Rock the Socks, Rock Your Socks Day. Our employee giving campaign theme this year is a pool theme called Keep Our Students Afloat, and we will kick that off on April 12th. With Dr. Mitchell's announcement of her retirement, I thought it was important to review our fundraising efforts that took place during her five-year leadership as the president of JJC versus the previous five years. I am proud and thankful to report that we have had a 32% increase in donations to the college under Dr. Mitchell's presidency. Our average contribution from FY11 through FY15 was 1.7 million, and our average for FY16 through FY20 was 1.68 million. I can tell you that the Foundation Board of Directors has always been very impressed with the strong relationship she has had with them and how she has helped the college's advancement team raise awareness in the community 
in the community of JJ State. The next foundation morning uh, board meeting will be held next Wednesday, March 17th at 7.30 a.m. Any questions? Yes, I have one quick question, Christy. Um, the deadline you said is May 1st for the uh, scholarships. Is this for scholarships uh, for the fall semester? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are, are students able, if they're going through a hardship now, are they able to apply for anything for like the summer semester? Yes, we have this. We have plenty of money in the student emergency um, fund. They can apply online. If you go to the website, it says um, financial support right at the very top, and you, they, the students click on it, and there's several areas they can get. Go to the laptop pro loaner program. They can um, apply. The form there is for student emergency. So there's plenty of things. And then some of the students that have received scholarships for spring and haven't used all the money we roll that over into summer thank you anything else thank Thanks, you uh, next ICCTA Ms. Broderick okay um really brief this uh Friday and Saturday is the ICCTA uh conference up in Schaumburg of which I will be attending. Dr. Mitchell, you'll be up there too, won't you? I'll With be Thursday. The Thursday, 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 you'll Thursday. be there, correct? Yeah. Um, lots of stuff to talk about. Um, waiting to see what our board table is going to be talking about with regards to roundtable discussions, which I'll bring back uh, to the next month's meeting. Um, I had shared with um, uh, Jake and I think Dan, did you guys have a chance to um, listen to the one about uh, from ACCT regarding the process in, of finding a CEO? I, I did not yet. Okay. Well, they had one and there's, I, I don't want to discuss it right now. I think it's later to discuss, but we never had to go the ACCT route because Judy was internal um, and we had a good search with having Judy internal, um, but there were things that to explore and next month I'll go maybe through some of that uh, after we, you know, get more of a handle on your term and your time here because we still have a lot of time to do it. But I just brought that up because there are a lot of ACCT courses that are online that are free that we're eligible to listen to. And that was one of the ones I thought it's good to listen to and see where the role of you is at as you are you know, walking out and retiring. And then the search of finding someone and the type of search that has to be done and who engages in that search and where your role comes into in passing on your information from you as the old leader to the new leader. And with that, that concludes my report. Question for Trustee Broderick. Uh, that report, or the information you sent to Trustee O'Connell and Mahalik, would you oh. be able to forward that to me as well? It's, ex it's expired already. Okay. Uh, they only gave us a short window. And I had made a comment about it, and Jake said, could you pass it on? And I, did you, you guys didn't get to see it then? Uh, I, I did not get to see it, unfortunately. It's been really hard to get work. I have down a dispatcher, so. They're gonna, yeah, they're going to have another one next month. So when it does come, I'll make sure you all are aware of it. Thank you. Okay, thanks. We did have ACCT. Pardon me? We did have ACCT recommend another president before. Mm -hmm. We had that before, but the cost, the search of the cost is like, up to almost a hundred thousand when you're looking. And when we had Dr. When we obtained Dr. Mitchell to move up, we didn't have that cost. I'm not talking about Dr. Mitchell. I know that, but when you had the prior one, Deb Daniels, I know. Yeah. I, I understand that. Okay. It's a very costly search to go through. Um, student trustee Ian. Um, Jim Kipolta. So I mean, while he's pulling up the presentation, I mean, I already we already kind of touched on the. Um, uh, board of Trustees candidate forum. So I will make sure to uh, send the link out and see if it's going to be like live on TV and on YouTube and everything. And if you can go to the next slide, please. Um, so I already talked about the candidate. And then uh, in the, the week after spring break, so since spring break is next week, uh, for National Ag Week, our Student Ag Association is wanting to um, do a kind of informal week and or informational week and then also kind of adding some fun into it so on the first day we're going to be doing a guest speaker and on um the thursday we're going to be making bacon mac and cheese we're partnering with the culinary department to um they're going to be doing the demo and then we're hopefully going to be putting together some kits 
to distribute to all the students. So they will, so all everything that they will need to make um, the mac and cheese will be at their disposal. They just have to sign up. They don't have to pay anything. They just have to show up, get it, and then go home and make it and be there um, when everything is being done. And then obviously uh, it's, well, now it's March and soon to be May when we are going to be needing a new student trustee. So that is um, out and about. And there's already um, some interest. And I know the students that are, that are interested in it. So I know that it will be in great hands. They are phenomenal um, candidates. I know whoever is, is picked will, will do a great job. Um, they're just great students. Uh, I've gotten to know them over, over the past, well, past two years now that I've been, um, been a student. And then on a good side, I've been talking about putting out a kind of student checkup uh, response form similar to what I did in December. So if you can go to the next slide, please. So I sent out this Tuesday was sent out um, by Dr. Farmer. She sent out a, um, on my behalf, a form that it, it was just, it was a lot shorter. I believe it was five questions this time instead of 10 to just ask the students how they're doing so far this semester, how everything's going academically, mentally, financially, and then kind of just discussing um, everything that's going on within the tutoring and learning center. Um, and then also, most importantly, seeing if they have noticed any changes uh, that the college has um, done since the previous semester, uh, making sure that they are aware of everything that's going on within the college and making sure that they that everything that we discussed in this board and making sure that everything that Dr. Gray is doing, that student wellness and everything um, that's working behind the scenes is being noticed. And if you can go to the next slide, please. So this is uh, when, I, when I proposed the question of how everybody was doing mentally, academically, and uh, financially. There was a lot of, it was a lot of good in, on the academic side and the financial side. Um, there's, there's quite a few people just saying like, academically, I'm doing great. I'm getting used to this online format, which is good because, I mean, we're going on almost a full year now of being completely online. And so a lot of students are getting used to it. The downside is, of course, the mental health is kind of, is is starting to take a, a a bigger toll on everyone. If if they weren't feeling it in um, the fall semester, they're starting to feel it now. They're starting to get just mentally drained. So good good thing spring break is next week. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Kind of getting a mental break, uh, just taking a step back from from my academics and being able to take that break. And then if you go to the next slide, please. And then um, kind of going off the mental health side, um, there people or the students are noticing that if you look at that second one, uh, someone said, yes, I see the college offering more support and resources for mental health. So it's definitely going, it's not going unnoticed. Um, a lot of the comments within um, just asking if they've noticed any changes are very positive reviews. A lot of students are saying like, yes, I'm, I'm enjoying all the, um, emails that are coming from student wellness, uh, student activities, uh, student development, whatever um, the email is coming from, they're, they're talking about that they're being able to see all the, the resources that the college is offering and they're, they're starting to utilize them more. And so that's definitely a good thing that I really like to see um, coming from the students. And then, so this has only been out for, um, oh wait, no, this was sent last Tuesday, not this Tuesday. So this has been um, sent out for a, for a week now. And so I also uh, want to say thanks to Dr. Gray. She ha um, she's going to be distributing this to uh, the professors to remind them to remind the students to, to fill this form. So hopefully in the fall semester, um, I had about a hundred and I think it was about, it was a little over a hundred um, responses. And so with it being distributed to the professors, um, having the professors reminded about it, I'm hoping that um, I can get, I can fly past that 100 mark um, in getting en in enough responses. And then it brings awareness to all of the um, services that the, the college is offering. And then if you can go to the last slide. Um, I mean, I always love I, lo I always love adding the quotes and uh, this one of course is the wise does it once what the fool does it last 
this is kind of just saying like take your chance. Um, the, the I mean, you if you if you're not if you're not going to take your chance now, then you're going to be a fool when you when you take it finally at last. Um, and I just want to say again, thank you. Of course, the students, um, if if they do watch the board meetings, then they then they find out that you guys eliminated the online um, course fees, and you've been doing so since last spring semester. Um, but if they don't, I just want to say thank you on their behalf because it truly makes a difference in in the um, financial side of things. And then, but then again, just spring break next week. So hopefully everybody can just take a mental break and get get refreshed for the final the final push, and we can get back to a kind of normal life. Hopefully going into the summer and the fall fall 2021 semester. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. Next item, Builders and Grounds, Jake and or Dan. Okay, we only, uh, we had no uh, bids tonight to approve. Uh, next month, uh, we have uh, the first one, the exterior tuck pointing and painting. Um, it was budgeted at $70,000 and came in at $56,000. And we will be uh, voting on this next month. Um, the bid for the parking lot improvements has come in. Um, that will be voted on next month as well. Uh, they replaced the uh, bid to replace the theater stage floor and carpet. Uh, will be coming in um, on the 18th, and that will be voted on next month. Uh, the bid for the natural science and natural uh, natural gas supply, which is uh, we actually go out instead of just saying we have NICOR, we go out to the various uh, different. Uh, companies in order to bid and price out that to make sure we get the best price possible. Um, that's going to come in here um, on the 16th and we'll vote on that next month. And finally, uh, we have a bid to replace uh, the J building elevators, uh, which is which is out for bid. Um, and that will be voted on in the May meeting. Um, an update on workday, I guess everything looks like it's it's moving and clearing the pine um, and they they're excited that the 7 one start date will be will be the day that we're going to convert over the work day fully so um, that's all i have dan do you have anything else no i couldn't get into the meeting <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you next item is dr mitchell Okay, good evening. I actually have highlights from each of the divisions tonight just to give you a little preview of what's been going on or a little summary. So first from Academic Affairs, um, pleased to announce we are offering a dispensary agent training and certification. The four-hour class on dispensary operations covers the required topics to become certified as a dispensary agent in Illinois, adult use bill 1438, proper identification, use storage and disposal, packaging and labeling, health, safety and security, record keeping and inspections, inventory tracking regulations, and privacy issues. The course will be offered Thursday, April 22nd, and the cost is $150. Through our IT division, we had a cross-functional team that was just selected to present at NISOD's annual conference, the International Conference on Teaching and Leadership Excellence, April 28th through 30th, which will be virtual this year. The title of the presentation is Integrating Multiple Technology Tools for Campus-Wide Collaboration and Professional Development. The co-presenters are Jake Tahaney, our very own Jake, Margot Underwood, Michelle Meyer, and Evan Brown. The idea for this presentation was spawned from their weekly Let's Talk Teams conversations, which have been attended regularly by a cross-functional group of faculty and staff. These sessions continue to be highly collaborative and have served a dual purpose for training and education, as well as cultivating ideas and solutions to positively impact the student experience in our largely virtual learning environment. Next area, student development. It's important to highlight how the student development team has continued to assist our high school counselors and students with the FAFSA, or Alternative Application for Illinois Financial Aid. They've created financial aid help video series, created a FAFSA walkthrough video, sent our financial aid application assistance flyer to all high school counselors. They're offering one-on-one -on -one virtual application assistance appointments. They offer and open a Q&A virtual session for application assistance. They've shared the Illinois Student Assistance Commission or ISAC financial aid application completion workshops information. 
and shared the ICE Corp member information. Financial aid has emailed all 120 plus high school counselors in our district personally to share these resources. We encourage them to post them to their high school websites, share them with their families, and reach out to us to schedule any virtual Zoom or Teams open sessions with their high school families. This is the first year that the new Illinois law is in effect, which states that high school seniors must complete their FAFSA or be exempt to receive their diploma, and high school counselors are aware of this, and that's why we're choosing this direction, and we've chosen this months ago. Our administrative services team, they're making great progress on workday implementation process with a go-live date of phase one, July 1, 2021. Currently, we're in the configuration and prototype and testing phases of the implementation, focusing on reports and unit testing, integration build and unit testing and end-to-end -end testing. I can tell you, and I know Jeff Heap's sitting in the room and I'm glad you're sitting up and not sleeping, the work that this team is doing and the employees, the staff from across this institution in HR, financial services, IT is just amazing and tremendous. And, and my heart goes out to all of them because once this is over and we roll out phase one, you can breathe. So that sigh of relief is coming soon. So hang mm -hmm. in there team. Um, HR, we continue to maintain daily operations while executing workday testing with a current total of 2,394 logins and proxy trans transactions to date. The HR team also continues to earn accolades for our intentional diversity search efforts with JJC being recognized as a top employer for the second year in a row by diversityjobs.com. Communications and marketing, from 2019 to 2020, our Google Ads marketing campaign more than doubled the number of completed prospective student applications the college received. In 2019, our ad campaign drove 2,032 completed applications. In 2020, that number was almost or over doubled 4,766 applications. So great work. DEI and C, diversity and equity, inclusion and compliance. Pleased to announce that since JJC rolled out its cultural competency workshops in October 2020, 61% of the general campus has completed or is scheduled to complete the workshop. The workshops have provided opportunities to strengthen our understanding of cultural competency and create a safe place for having constructive conversations related to diversity. Post-assessment data supports that employees feel much more comfortable addressing diversity and equity and inclusion issues. Thank you to Escortine and her team. And not, I don't want to say last but not least, my foundation, Christy, thank you so much for your kind words. And you have to know that I enjoy working with Christy and the foundation. They are an amazing operation. Every one of those board members are so supportive. Um, the partnerships we have created um, are just amazing. And, and I love that work. And we will continue, Christy. We've got 10 months to go. So let's move that marker. So thank you to the foundation for their approval of that additional $250,000 in funding to support our two new enrollment initiatives one to help attract new students to JJC and the other to help them complete. So with that, again, I just wanna share, I'm just so proud of all the work of all of our employees, our faculty, staff, and our students. They're amazing. You deserve a good spring break. Um, I will be here, so if you need me, you can you know where to find me. And then lastly, happy birthday to trustee Jake Mahalik. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Okay, so the next item is the chairman's report, which I guess that would be me. First off, I'd like to say thank you to the Bills and Grounds Committee. Um, I'd like to say thank you to Pat Van Dyne and Rick Lyman and Janice Reedus. Uh, when Jake was saying that we came in, they estimated X number of dollars, so we came in way below it. They do that all the time, which, is, which is remarkable because uh, you know, you never know what's going to happen in, in the bricks and mortar, and you got to have that little bit of buffer there. Uh, I'm a little partial to the bill as a grounds committee, seeing how I founded it. Uh, anyway, so with that, uh, let's see. That a week letter. from today. That letter. Did you want that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I got it. Okay, just checking. <laughs> we from today is St. Patrick's Day, so all the Irish people, Dan, uh, congratulations. A week from Saturday is the first day of spring. Congratulations. Mm. <laughs> um, and then a little bittersweet letter that I got, and I will read it. 
Dear Chairman Wunderlich and Board of Trustees, the JJC Foundation Board of Directors is no, lo no longer request that a member of the JJC Board of Trustees be assigned as a representative at the Foundation Board of Directors meetings. As stated in the Foundation bylaws, the Joliet Junior College President gives a report to the Foundation on behalf of the college as a non-official member of the Foundation Board. The report that the President gives to the Foundation Board is very extensive, therefore, there is no need for an additional report from a trustee. Um, we appreciate the Board of Trustees' continued support of the JJC Foundation, which is, uh, I know years ago we had, you know, trustees and we didn't have a trustee on the Foundation. Uh, then we did, and now I guess we don't. So I'm sorry to hear that, but I guess it's, I guess Nancy doesn't have to do too much work anymore, <laughs> which is which is good, I guess. Um, other than that, thank you everybody for everything you did tonight and for all your reports. And let's see, we've got this, we've got that. So at this time, I need a motion to go into closed session for 2C1, 2C2, and 2C5. And when we come out of executive session, there will be no action taken. So moved. Second. Motion in the second. Joan Colorado, please. Frederick? Aye. Proceed again? Yes. Mahalik? Yes. Morales? Yes. O'Connell? Yes. Washington? Yes. Wilkinson? Yes. And Wonderland? Yes.